So, wonder at the flow of e-journal content. And the place where you can <coughs> access repositories. And consider the weighty problem of digital preservation. Now, we want to make this exciting. And engage you in heretical talk. So we plan to tell you a story. Of fairies and the keepers.org. <laughs> Down in Dingle Dell, four bad fairies dwell. Named Neglect, Decay and Loss. And Worry Much. Now please be brave when we tell you what the good digital preservation folks say. And Grandma says, whatever you do... <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Theo. Uh, repository manager, what are your preservation plans for those articles in your repository? Um, besides that, um, you mean all those authors' final copies I've got for those open access purposes? Should I be worrying about them long term? Well, yes and no. Um, are they the versions of record? I don't think so. You think that the publisher's final copy is the author of record? Great, yes. Great. Peter. So here we go. The author of the version of record. Those articles in your repositories are but part of a larger information object. Although individual articles are important, extracting them from their content makes the problem much harder to preserve um, from each other. So we could regard each journal as a data stream, as a continuing resource. Yes, and trying to preserve the content of journals seems a much more sensible approach. So put simply, there are far fewer ISSNs than DOIs. That's good, Theo. And remember, those authors' final copies, they don't really have an identifier and some rubbish metadata. But now we tell of the keepers, yes, the good, good fairies, fairies who act as your digital, digital shelves. shelves. <laughs> they are there to preserve the published final copy over the long term. Okay, so what you're saying is I should check that the publisher has entrusted the journal with one of these keepers. But how do I know who's looking after what? Good question. Fortunately, you can check out the keepers registry at thekeepers.org. So what's this then? Oh, it's another neat initiative by GIST. And this one is an ISSN <laughs> Edina co-production. It's a monitor on all the good activities of the good fairies. Okay, so an example. Um, I've got an author's final copy of an article published in the journal Folklore, and it's been put into the Edinburgh Research Archive. Mm. That wouldn't be good fairies, bad and good, a post-structural analysis. I think it is, Peter. Ah, it's in volume 19. And we can check there, it's been deposited by the publisher and been looked after by three different archiving agencies. Fantastic. So in light of the UK government's Finch reports, um, does it really matter whether it's green or gold open access? <laughs> well, not really. In gold open access, it's all about the publisher's final copy anyway. And the journal content index by DOAJ is being archived by eDepo. Either which way, the institutional repository doesn't necessarily have archival responsibility for the copy of record. Well, let's recap. The focus so far <laughs> has been on the publisher's final copy as a copy of record, and the repository role is to make the access copy open. So that's all very reassuring, Peter, but I'm sure I should worry about something. <laughs> well, is there anything of special interest in those authors' final copies? That's a good question, Peter. Um, I can think of two things that make it special. Um, perhaps there's something interesting about the content of these papers that the author deposited, or uh, Perhaps there's um, disaster recovery that I need. So, okay, what would be special? Well, for starters, there are those papers with funny typos. For example, that one by Albert Einstein that says E equals MC cubed. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> and there's um, one by a certain Professor Peter Higgs at the University of Edinburgh. He spelt boson with an M. Um, make it the Higgs bosom? What, do you mean the <laughs> family <laughs> pairs? Oh, <laughs> boy. So, what we're saying is, appraisal is important, um, and I think we should go through um, and assess what has long-term value. Yes, and if you regard it as something as special, then act accordingly. Does anybody else have a copy of that copy, if that's so special? And it would be a really good idea, because you don't want your tragedy to be of Alexandria Library significance. <laughs> well, remember, one of the good things about being digital is you can make lots of copies and share it with something easily. So I've heard about this LOX slogan, lots of copies to keep stuff safe. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Do make copies, make copies, make copies, make copies, make copies. <laughs> <laughs> but we know that copies can get changed very easily, either accidentally or on purpose. All too true. The digital preservation expert folk are very keen on file integrity and provenance. So what you're saying is if I accept archival responsibility, I have to take it seriously. 
and get some advice. You bet. But there's a lot of help out there. So I guess locks is another way of saying don't put all your eggs in one basket. Yes. And don't put all your faith in only one technology approach, nor only one organisation. This digital preservation stuff is really tricky. Remember the simple, compelling idea, digital information is best preserved by replicating it in multiple archives run by autonomous organisations. Okay, so um, if you do put your eggs in one basket and they break, um, you know, what's this thing about disaster recovery? You know, I've worked hard to make my repository mission critical for my institution, so do I really need to make sure that I can avoid or at least recover from disasters? How do I do that? Well, as I've said before, just listen. Share with others. And use a shared service as a backup for institutional repositories. Wait, wait, hang on, it's getting a bit out of hand. Um, it started well with talk of bad fairies and good keepers, here's to look after the copy record. But now I'm getting a bit scared, because um, I have to worry about what's special, and now we're talking about disasters. OK, OK, calm down, calm down. Uh, and let's bring this to a close, and let's look for a happy ending. So, <laughs> Liz wanted to prompt you to reflect about the purpose of all those journal articles you've been collecting in your repositories, especially the author's final copy. Well, as we know, any minute now, as we know, there are good fairies and bad fairies. The keepers of the good fairies. They're there set in the Safe Places Network around the Keepers Registry, which is found at thekeepers.org. So, thanks for listening. Fairies, listening? I think we're done.